Notice that the economic model, that the traditional model, is a limiting case of the mimetic model. It's, it's not ruled out, it's just up in one little corner of the space. So let's compare them. On the traditional model, you have good things. The Darwinian says, well, there's good things, but also bad things, and so-so things. There depend on genius in the traditional model. No, sometimes genius, but as often as not, just dumb luck that they get created. Traditional says these are things that are valued. Well, no, a lot of times they're not valued. Sometimes they are. In both cases, these items are passed on. That's how we get cultural transmission. The traditional view says with improvements, the Darwinian view says, well, with mutations, some of them good, some of them bad, some of them not so, just as it were, like drift. So the traditional view is an economic model, and the Darwinian has the economic model as a limiting case, just one of many possible models. This is by Olive Branch to the social sciences and so forth, and, and to the, uh, the, the humanities to say, look, your traditional model is not thrown out, it's just put in one corner of a larger space and explained. Now, once we have cultural software installed, we're ready for a momentous step because this creates, for the first down time, patterns of top-down causation of a non-mysterious sort. Now, the book that I think is best at articulating this is the most recent book, or one of the most recent books by my friend and colleague Doug Hostetter, called I Am a Strange Loop, where he shows that minds, human minds, can be dominated or driven by means, or by an idea, or by, by one idea, or by ideas. And that this is a process that you need to have the memes to make sense of. And it creates a whole new way for things to be done in the head. And this is the fulcrum, if you like, of intelligent design. Now, we're ready. What's the difference between the termite castle and Gaudi's wonderful church? And the answer is, the termite castle is designed and built by a process where there's no top-down intelligent design, there's no blueprint, there's no plan in advance. The individual termites are each just doing their little mindless job. They are competent at what they do, but they don't have to understand. There's nobody there that understands the larger project. That is bottom-up design and construction, and it has evolved by natural selection. In the case of Gaudi, it's evo Gaudi evolved by natural selection, same as you and me. He was not a skyhook. He was not a gift from the gods. He was a brilliant person. But he was in charge. He had the ideas. He had the blueprints. He had the reasons. He had it all worked out in his head, and he laid down the law. He ordered people around and told them what to do. It's just the opposite order of control in the, in the construction of the building. The results look similar, but they're profoundly different in the way they came to exist. Another nice example. <laughs> I got this slide from Matt Ridley uh, a week or two, he used it in his talk. On the left we see a national land hand axe, on the right we see a wireless mouse, both designed for the hand, both about the same size. But the one on the left is much, much, much more like a termite hill than the one on the right. Ashley hand axes were unchanged for a million years in our ancestors. But the one on the right, the wireless mouse, is a classic example of top-down intelligent design. In fact, as an example of top-down design, you could hardly improve on Turing's computers. Before anybody built the first computer, they'd worked it all out in representation. They'd designed it, proved it, proof of concept, mathematically proved it. Nobody was going to put up all that money and all that time and energy to build that thing until they were pretty sure it was going to work. That's very, very different from the termites. In other words, we're the first intelligent designers in the tree of life. Now, our natural tendency to interpret all design as top-down, as representation-driven, is both anachronistic and anthropocentric. Remember, that's where we began with the pre-Darwinian worldview, where you have to have a representation-driven, an anthropomorphic creator. This is a, 
an understandably anthropocentric and anachronistic view. In the beginning was the word. I've read that somewhere. <laughs> and it's just false. Words are a very recent invention. One of the most recent products of blind, purposeless, natural selection. Before there could be intelligent design, there had to be words. Yes. That's the grain of truth in this. But not before there was design. We, the reason representers, can now look back and discover the reasons everywhere in the tree of life. It took Darwin to figure out that a mindless process discovered all those reasons. We intelligent designers are among the effects, not the cause, of all those purposes. Now, some of you may have noticed I have a, I have a little lapel pin. It says Darwin, it has little feet. Well, I was wearing my pin a few years ago, and the physicist, Murray Gellman, we were at an evolution meeting somewhere, and he, he's a polymath, and he said, oh, hi, Dan, I like your pin. Uh, he said, you know that the Christian fish that it's based on is uh, uh, the first acronym. Here's the Greek word ichthus for fish. And he said, did you know that ichthus was the first acronym? I said, what's it for? And he said, well, it stands for Jesus Christos Theon Ios Soter. In other words, Jesus Christ, God's Son and Savior. And that's why the Christians used the fish as their symbol. That's very interesting. Thank you, Maria. It's, uh, nice to know. He said, what I want to know is, what does D-A-R-W-I-N stand for? <laughs> well, I thought that was a good challenge. And I don't have the Greek, not really. I studied a little bit, but not much. But I do have some leftover high school Latin. So I went and got a half cup of coffee, and I thought about it, and I just got lucky, and I came up with something, which I'm really quite happy with. So I'm going to share it with you. Of course, there's no W in Latin, so you have to use double U. So what does D-A-R-W-I-N stand for? Have we got some classicists in the audience? I don't want to steal your thunder. If you, if you can do this, do it. Delare auctorum rerum. Delare. Remember Carthago delenda est? Carthage is destroyed. Destroy auctorum rerum, the author of things. Udu reversum. <laughs> Infinitum noscas. Destroy the author of things in order to understand the infinite universe. <laughs> Thank you very much.